Hey, what's up? This is John Cooper from the band Skillet, and you are watching the Guitar Mania channel. Yes! John, welcome to Vienna. Congratulations to your new album, Rise, which we understand is doing quite well in the American Billboard charts. Yes, thank you so much. Great to be here. It's our first time in Austria today. First time. First time ever. So glad to be here. How exciting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's good to have you here in, in, in Austria. Um, can you just tell us about the new album? I understand you're playing three songs from the new album live uh, on the correct. current tour. Yep. Yes, I'd love to tell you about the new record. Um, we are playing three songs tonight. It was a little hard to know which songs to, to, to do. To choose, yeah. Yeah, you know, but um, this is our third show on the Nickelback tour. And we've never toured with Nickelback either. So it was a little bit, wanted to see what their audience was like. And side note, I'm thrilled that Skillet fans are coming to the show. I didn't know how many people knew us at all. <laughs> so I'm thrilled that there's some people out here that know us. Thank you so much. Um, but uh, the, the new album rises out. And, we, you know, I wrote this album for like three years. It, it was a very long time because we were touring so much. Yeah, yeah. And so I wrote a bunch of songs. And we ended up choosing the songs. And we recorded a, a concept record. And it's our first concept album. And it's telling a story of your typical teenager today coming into adulthood right. and being faced with how tragic this world is and very desperate times and dark. You know, in America, we're experiencing especially a lot of violence in, with young people, kids you know, killing other kids and high school bullying and, and bombings and lots of terrible things. Mm. And so um, this is a story about a teenager being faced with how b crazy the world is becoming and looking for hope and rising above, you know, all this darkness. So basically a very positive message. I would say so, yes. Mm. I, I, I believe it's an inspiring record. It's, it's meant to say, yes, it's dark times, but there is hope. And it's a story of how this individual finds hope in God and, and he kind of gives him purpose and mm. all of a sudden he, he realizes that life is worth living. You know, mm -hmm. by the end of the record. So, mm -hmm. yeah. let us go straight into the songwriting for for the new album. I, sure. I read somewhere that you wrote more than sixty songs. Oh yes, uh, I wrote seventy two songs for the record, and, and I think it's because I get inspired to write by talking to fans and meeting fans after the show and coming to Austria and seeing people show up and, and sometimes they give me notes or they tweet me things that they're going through or how our music has helped them. Mm. And that inspires me to write songs, you know, I, and, and I don't know why, but they're, you know, your stories help me and, and I realize that we're affecting people. Mm. So music to me is all about, um, writing something that, that brings us together. Mm -hmm. You know, you and me, we connect. That's what music does for me. Right. I saw U2 last year, you know, the band U2. I thought, this is, this is the band to me that, that makes us, everybody in this stadium, 60,000 people, we all feel as one because of this band's songs, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to do. Uh, we, we, we were fans of your mus for musicians, uh, and, and, and I was, uh, would be interested, how do you write your songs? You grab the guitar, and yeah. uh, <laughs> how does it work? Or do you have melodies in your... Yeah, you know, I'm a little different in the fact that I, I'm from a musical family. My mom was a piano teacher, uh, so I began taking piano at, at age five, and I was not allowed to listen to rock music. It, it, I could not listen to anything with drums. Drums was like the devil's instrument, you know? And so I grew up just listening to what I would call church music, you know? Um, and my mom was a singer, a vocal teacher. So I began singing at a young age and, and, and music at a young age. And so I began playing guitar when I was about 18. Bass, guitar at 19. And so um, when I write music, 
I'm mainly writing in my head. You know, I write melodies, and I usually kind of can hear the chord progression. So I don't have to have a guitar or a piano. I just kind of write it in my head, and then sometimes I figure out the chords on guitar or a piano. Mm. You know, what suits it best. Um, and, and and do you take uh, do you cooperate with other songwriters? I mean, your wife, for instance. Or uh, uh, yes, that's right. My my wife Corey is our keyboard player, and she plays guitar as well in the band. And she is an absolutely awesome keyboard player, wonderful piano player, and so she's very good. Sometimes I'll I'll, I'll write something and I'll show it to her and, and with the chords, and she might change the chord progression a little bit. Because um, she's very good. She's very, um, what I would call, she knows a lot of the theory behind the music. And, and so she's very calculated. She'll change it up. We write great music together. And I do write with other writers as well. Right, okay. Um, I understand that at the moment you're playing the bass guitar. Yes. Uh, can we go a bit, uh, a bit into the equipment of, uh, that you're oh, using yeah, at sure. the moment? I, I am a terrible guitar player. But I'm, I won't believe that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, believe me. I'm, uh, and when I started playing bass, I was like, oh, this, this instrument makes sense to me. Uh, I think it's because the guitar strings are so small and your fingers are so, uh, you know, and, and bass you can just thud on it. So I love bass. And, um, and interesting, I can't sing and play guitar very well, but I can sing and play bass without a, a problem, right? So bass feels very natural to me. Um, I play a BC Rich mm -hmm. um, that I really like, and, and I like it because it's very, uh, I'm a very aggressive bass player, you know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not probably very tender. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I'm not, I'm not tender. I'm like, ugh, like Gene Simmons, right, from Kiss, um, or Nikki Six, Motley Crue, you know? Um, and so uh, I, I love my BC Rich because of that. It's very big and it's heavy, and I can just. Was, can it, was beat it custom it up. made for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, no but I, I actually really liked it, uh, this guitar, and I wanted it for a video shoot, but I didn't have it yet, this bass guitar. And so I called the company, and they said, Well, who, who, where do you, who are you endorsed with? And I said, No one. They said, Well, we'll send you one out, and if you like it, you can be endorsed by BC Rich. So that's how I started. And right. I just like the bass guitar. And what, a, mm -hmm. what about the amplifier? Amplifier. I, I've used several different things. I love Ampeg. Ampeg SVT is pretty much, in my mind, the best amplifier, bass amplifier ever made for, for me and what I like. I'm a big King's X fan. Mm. You know who King's X is? Doug Pinnock my my favorite, you know, my second favorite bass player, I will mm -hmm. say, and he always used Ampeg, and I, I love that sound for Skillet. Right, well, who is your first? First <laughs> w uh, would, would be uh, Chris Squire, is my favorite bass player. I I'm a big Yes fan, and, and, and of course, he plays very different than me, because he plays with a pick, mm -hmm. and you know, he had, he had that red Redenbacher sound, <laughs> but, uh, but I love that. Do you practice? Yes, I, I don't practice as much as I used to. And, and part of that is because um, I love Dream Theater, I love you know, King's X, Kansas, I love progressive rock, and I used to want to be a bit of a progressive rock band, but Skillet is not really that, so, uh, so I don't have to practice as much as well, I used and then to. You have, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're the, the voice of the band, so you have to look after your voice. Yeah, I, I, I practice my singing and my songwriting more than my bass playing, mm -hmm. but I do, I love that kind of music, and I, I do love doing some bass riffs here and there mm -hmm. when I can. You have quite a relentless touring schedule. I mean, you just toured with Shinedown and yep. Papa Roach, and now with Nickelback in Europe. Yep. Do they treat you well, Nickelback? <laughs> Nickelback has treated us very well. Um, you know, Skill has been lucky. We've been treated well by everybody we've toured with. Uh, and I say we're lucky because I, some people watching might not know that you can get treated very poorly in, in this business, especially if the, the headlining band is quite insecure you know, and so like, I'm the big headlining band and I don't want you to be bigger than me, so I'm going to make you look small, I'm going to make you feel bad. Mm. Um, we've toured with great bands and Nickelback um, has treated us extremely well. But you know what, also, I think it goes both ways. Also, I think we're an easy band to work with because mm. we're not arrogant and um, sometimes you have opening bands that would, you know, come in and kind of think, uh, 
I should be bigger than the Nickelback. You know, they're no good. I'm, you know, and, and sometimes opening bands can be that way, and, and it, it causes this thing. People treat each other bad, mm. but we treat the bands good because we're all out here doing it together. Right. And it's all about the fans, mm. and it's all about doing a great show that the fans leave and they say, I want to come back. I'll pay money to see that again. Yeah. You know, so hopefully everybody's treating each other good. So for you, Europe is quite a sort of a new new ground. Yes. And, 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 and well, good luck for, for, for your touring oh, in, in thank Europe. You so much. We hope to see more of Skillet on oh, uh, I European hope so. stages. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much.